It turns out that Hitler had about five different people that looked like him, and they played the role of the Fuhrer. The story of Hitler's doubles began with Julius Schreck. Julius Schreck was Hitler's personal bodyguard and his chauffeur. He was the closest officer to Hitler. Schreck actually started the SS before Himmler. Himmler took it over and made it into a cult. But it was Schreck who started the SS because it was part of Hitler's bodyguard. And Schreck was Hitler's lookalike. From a distance, you couldn't tell them apart. He was the first person that played the role of the Fuhrer. After that was another man by the name of Heinrich Berger. He was a stenographer, and he worked at the Wolf's Lair headquarters. This was in East Prussia. His job was to imitate Hitler. He could speak like Hitler. He could convince all of Hitler's generals that he was Hitler until Colonel Klaus von Stauffenberg put a bomb under the chair of who he thought was Hitler. And he blew off the legs of Heinrich Berger, who died a few hours later. He was the second doppelganger, the second double. The third double was a man named Gustav Weller. Now, Gustav Weller was a performer. He was a vaudeville type of character, but he looked exactly like Hitler, and it, it caused a lot of commotion, and it became a problem for the Gestapo. They arrested Weller a few times because he was not a Nazi sympathizer. He would make fun of the Nazis. Hitler's private secretary, Martin Bormann, got Gustav Weller to work as a double in a place called the Berghof, which was Hitler's country house in the Alps. People thought that maybe it was Weller that was the person that they found shot in the Chancellery Garden. But supposedly, a British surgeon who had also examined Rudolf Hess claimed that Weller was well and alive after the war, that he had been interrogated by the Allies. So we still didn't know who the person was that was shot and left to resemble Hitler. The doctor who did this, by the way, was uh, W. Hugh Thomas. He's written quite a few books, and he's the one who actually pushed the idea that Hitler and the top-ranking Nazis used doubles and look-alikes. In fact, it's said that Scotland Yard examined Hugh Thomas's theory and has kept it under lock and key. For a hundred years, none of this information will be released to the public. There's another doppelganger that's worth mentioning. A lot of people have heard of him. His name is Alistair Crowley. Now, Crowley was a Satanist and a cultist. And he was a Nazi sympathizer, there's no doubt about that. There's a lot that needs to be explored about the Crowley's connection with Nazism. And of course, Crowley spoke several languages. He had gone to Cambridge University. He even spoke Greek. My question is this, who was the person that was tortured in that room that I found in that wooden chair? Or to put it quite bluntly, what became of the real Adolf Hitler? Did he just disappear after the First World War before he was famous or known, just an obscure person whose identity was stolen? That's possible. A lot of people think the same thing about bin Laden. Osama bin Laden, uh, as you may know, was also uh, more or less a hospital patient. He was on kidney dialysis. These are facts. His health was very bad. And yet we were told that he was riding a white horse leading the, you know, leading Al-Qaeda. No, you can't have both. Either this guy was sick and he was under medical care. And who was his doctor? Well, the doctor who started Al-Qaeda. What was his name, by the way? You have to be careful who your friends are. 
When they finally found bin Laden in this so-called millionaire mansion, inside it was just a, a pigsty. It was like living in filth, as a lot of the pictures revealed. One of bin Laden's wives claimed that they had been kept in that house for years without a telephone, like they were under house arrest. So it's the same sort of thing that I'm trying to get at with my bunker story. Was someone being held hostage? Was identity theft being used to start the to start a war, to start a world war? Hitler's doubles. You'll be able to find it on Amazon, and it has uh, illustrations, a lot of photographs, a lot of biometrics where we compare facial features, especially the ear, the shape of the ear. This is something that is very hard to fake. And yes, Aleister Crowley and the Führer had exactly the same ear.